Would you like to see an Edelrid Mega Jewel? Mega Break on this episode of Slack Snap. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my garage. Today we are going to break a Edelrid Mega Jewel. And we have a guide mode and a normal one that we're going to break and maybe we'll, depending on how things break, throw an ATC in here. So let's show you how the Edelrid Mega Jewel works and show you what we're gonna do in the test. Okay, Bobby, what do we got here? So this is your Edelrid device. I have never actually used these outside. We just looked up a video on some website. We learned how to use this on YouTube? Oh yeah, that. Weird. Um, what a place to learn stuff. But this is a little bit different than a lot of um, guide mode devices that I have used in that the rope goes up from the bottom of the device through the top and then back down. Um, and then you clip this through the whole device. It's kind of loaded exactly opposite um, of your normal belaying mode. Yeah, I have, a, I have an ATC guide and it's the opposite. I put the rope in that way. So. But so this is our, our climber or load strand here, and we would take rope up like this. Um, but it has a um, kind of, Argus capture feature there if yeah. they were to fall and load it. Yeah, kind of a self locking thing. So is this too small to give you full value strength out of your device? Because in theory, we would want the rope to break first and not your hardware. Here we just did a figure eight on this side because that's kind of a similar situation in real life. And we're only doing one strand because that's pretty much how you would use it unless you're guiding two people at one time using two different ropes or two different ends. And that would be different. But just for this sake, we're gonna see if the rope breaks before this piece in the back does. Well, that's interesting. I think I noticed it slipping before it broke the rope. So we got 8.25 kilonewtons or 1,650 pounds of force. So I assume we can get more out of this, enough to maybe up the rope. And if it breaks another, like let's say a 10 mil rope, because this is a nine millimeter rope, if it holds that, then we'll put two strands in there and really put this thing to the test. Okay, so we're basically just de-sheathing this now. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, figure eights don't stay dressed once they hit a certain force. What happened? I cut the sheep and then it cut. Um, but it one, rotated two, three, at some four, point. Five, six, seven. Uh, and no, it, it didn't. And it, it happened at 7.5 kilonewtons or 1,550 pounds of force. Like, it didn't rotate. Hold on. Where's the carabiner? It's right there. Yeah. It's it's still it's, in the same spot. What's the condition of this guy? It looks not... It, yeah, that's it's, what it's he wanted really, us to test, yeah. and it's holding up just fine. Okay, we just looked at the footage. <laughs> Basically, the carabiner opened from the wire. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked, and then... Um, and then it rotated outside of the, the system. So, uh, and then the, the rope, um, got a twist because it was getting pulled, like the sheep was getting pulled separate from the core and it flipped into. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, a, what a mess. Well, well, let's just try to break this thing. <laughs> Man, look at this thing. It's not symmetrical anymore. This has bent quite a bit. 
We're gonna take it to destruction, but that's just from the last one. Wow. So I don't really know what to say about this. At least, I, I don't know if it's good it breaks your ropes before the device breaks, but I mean, doubled rope? You should be getting more than 12.4 kilonews before it just de-she-sheaths your ropes. That, I don't want to touch it, that little guy is still holding, so that's pretty impressive. Um, this, Hat was locked this time, and I believe that wire is jacked. So if we take this off, we'll take mode. We currently have 9.8 on there. I'm not afraid, even though I probably should be. Oh, God. Oh. Don't flinch. Don't flinch. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're still at five kilonewtons there. 4.9, okay. Oh, that was kind of fun. <laughs> okay, so, uh, this thing is whacked. It's a lot of fuzz. <laughs> what on earth? Check that out. So it... Oh. This rope. It flipped over itself. Yeah. Under it's, itself. It's squished under. Like, this is a 10 mil, too. It's not like it's well, too and, thin. And this side of the device is smaller than it was before. Uh, definitely smaller than the other side now. <laughs> so, okay. Wow. This carabiner is so warm. So warm. Okay. So it destroys your rope before it breaks. Um, yeah. It's you couldn't put much more force on that. It's rated to uh, ten fives, and I yeah, mean, you, you would generally be using dynamic ropes, and we were using a static because which, we didn't want to. Which is more abrasion resistant. Yeah. By the way, and I can. Uh, no, I can't. I mean, the shape that, actually is not too bad. Yeah, let's compare it to the other device. Uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's yeah, but the, not much different. This thing is starting to get um, pulled out of the back. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. right, it's supposed to be inside of the plastic. And it's supposed to look mm, symmetrical. Yeah. So maybe let's just try... Uh, Carabiners on either side? We'll just put it in like you're repelling with two strands. And then we'll just hold the brake or like lock off the brake hand so it doesn't slip through and see if it breaks the rope again in that orientation before um, like the device fails. Broke over there? Yeah. No. Yeah. 
Whoa. Whoa. Wow, this is very tight and I mean, you, you can't really break a device with a rope. With a rope. Not unless I just put a soft shackle in there and pulled on it, but that's not how you it's cut designed. Your soft shackle. Huh? I think you cut your soft shackle. Yeah, maybe, right? Um, well, oops, I turned that on. 6,450 pounds of force. Dang. Wow, look at this thing. It's so chewed up. And we got a core shot inside of there and it's just bunched up. So <laughs> this, this wire is very, very bent. So this had it in, in, in the memory, uh, 29.4 kilonewtons. So, I mean, you're never gonna put that kind of force on it, but you're the, like the moral of the story is you're not going to break your belay device, this one or another um, ATC of sorts. So that's good to know. It's good to know that the uh, the anchor, what we simulated as our repel anchor, would break before anything else in the system. Our belay loop would break before this. Belay loops break around 15 to 19. This device might be one with the rope. <laughs> yeah, the rope is no longer through the device. The top of it is just jammed into that knot that we had as the keeper. <laughs> so.